This video is going to show how we can achieve safe and secure software using the Eldray tool suite and the Tasking VX toolset for Tricor. Connected to my laptop at the moment, I have this Hitex Shield Buddy. It's a Tricor 375 device. Now, this is the Tasking IDE, and inside here I have a number of projects. And some of these projects I've uh, put together to run on the simulator. And it's these three projects here that I've designed or I've programmed to run on the board that I've got connected to my laptop at the moment. So we've got a, a number of files here describing some safe functions. And I've got a main that allows me basically to execute those functions. So let's check, first of all, we can actually build this project. And there we can see we've built an executable. Now, there's a number of things I'd like to be able to do with this project. First of all, let's see, is this code compliant to a coding standard such as, well, let's use the CERT standard. So I'm going to switch, first of all, to the LDRay perspective. And having done that, I'm now going to go and select the coding standard that I'm interested in. And I've already selected that, and we can see this is set to the CERT C standard. If I wanted, of course, I could select any other standard, including any of the MISRA standards, or I could create my own standard. Well, we'll stick with the CERT standard, and let's go and perform the analysis. So I have previously analysed this, so it shouldn't take too long to actually analyse, and then we'll be able to take a look at the results and find out, is this code compliant to the CERT standard. So it's doing a, a deep analysis and I thought I'd analyze it, but obviously I haven't. So we'll just wait for this to finish and then we'll be able to take a look and see, well, is this code compliant to CERT? Well, it certainly wasn't written to be compliant to CERT. So I imagine we're going to have quite a few violations. So let's just wait for this to finish and then we should be able to see in the Eldere code violations tab we should be able to see all the violations that we've detected. OK, so there we can see all these violations. And as I mentioned, the code wasn't written to be compliant to CERT. And so we have a lot of violations. If I double click, it's going to take me to the appropriate place. And here we can see, well, I should have specified the size of this array. Well, a lot of these are going to be very simple to fix. Now, what about the quality of the code? Let's go measure some metrics on the code and let's take a look at the metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. So lots of metrics we can measure, like the number of comments, but the one I'm interested in here is the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and I can see that this function safe sprintf, it's got a cyclomatic complexity of 14 and that's the most complex function that I have here. So let's view that graphically with a flow graph. And the flow graph is going to give us a graphical representation of all the code. So here we have a block of continuous statements, which corresponds to this block over here. Well, what about this block? Well, that corresponds to this one. And what are these? Well, these are the branches between the code, the branch from here to there. So that's uh, allowing us to understand how complex is the code. Now, what I'd like to be able to do now is to measure the structural coverage. I'd like to be able to execute the code on the target. And as it executes, find out, well, which of these blocks of code have we executed and which branches? So let's go and close this down and let's go and perform what we call a dynamic analysis. So first of all, I'm going to instrument the source code in order to put probes into the code. And then I'm performing the build so now I have an instrumented build. I should be able to go and execute it on the target. To communicate with the target, I've created this target.dcf file and we've used that. We've downloaded the target. We've executed it. We've got the results back from the target. And now we can actually take a look at these results and find out, well, how much code coverage did we actually obtain? So we'll just wait for that to finish and the number of ways in which we can view the coverage. Let's start by taking a look at a uh, dynamic overview report. And here we're able to see very clearly the statement branch and MCDC coverage for all our functions. If I wanted, I could go into one of these functions and get a closer view. And here I can see very clearly we have some lines of code that have not been executed. 
and others that have been executed. Well, another way of viewing this is to go back to the flow graph, and this time to look at a pass-fail coverage flow graph. And once again, this is going to show us all the functions. We can see the, how they're interconnected. Once again, I can sort them. And in this particular case, let's take a look at our safe sprintf function. We have 93% statement coverage, 81% branch decision coverage, and 40% MCDC. So once again, we'll view this as a flow graph. And again, this is color-coded, showing us very clearly the blocks of code where we have got coverage, and also the blocks of code where we haven't got coverage. It's also showing us some branches, so we haven't executed the branch from here down to there. Now, if I want to get 100% coverage, then I can do that by doing some unit testing. So let's invoke the unit testing tool tbrun, and then we'll be able to import some test cases that I've previously created, and we'll be able to run them. So let's go and import a sequence of test cases, and I have some here inside this folder, and there we have a sequence of test cases for the function safe sprintf. In fact, we have 13 test cases. I can click on each individual test case, and I can see the inputs and expected outputs. So let's go and execute this on the target. So it's going to generate a program. It's going to perform the, the build, and then as before, it's going to execute it on the target. We're going to get the results back from the target, and hopefully we're going to find that all the tests have passed, and they have. Well, that means with these inputs, we got the expected outputs. At the same time, let's take a look at our coverage. And so previously, we can see the coverage we obtained. And now, having executed these test cases, well, we have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage, and also 100% MCDC. OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can achieve safe and secure software using the Eldray tool suite and Tasking's VX toolset for Tricore. And if you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.